We left his house and headed back to mine, and most of the drive was in silence. He pulled into my driveway, parked, and we got out to go inside, and then out onto the back porch to settle on the swing. Look, I'm fucking terrified. But you're right. I said suddenly. We have to try. Or I do, at least. Devlin ran a hand over his face and turned away from me. I don't want to see you hurt, Vanessa. I had no idea it was going to be this dangerous. My great-great-grandfather was an evil motherfucker when he was still alive. I doubt that death has toned him down any. I don't want to see you hurt either, but we've got to do this, I stated firmly. Are you in or not? Fuck, he swore, leaning his head back and uttering a heavy sigh. I'm in. There's no fucking way I'm going to let you go alone to face that bastard. Then let's roll, I said. Wait, he said, putting a hand on my arm as I headed for the door. At least leave your mother a note. Please, she deserves that much. I'll add my mother's name and number to it so she can call her if she wants, and they can talk about how fucking goddamn stupid we are for doing this shit. Stupid or not, you know I'm right, I murmured, writing out the note to Mom. Devlin left his mother's name and number, and then we were out the door and headed to the state asylum. It was a nice ride down there, I have to admit. I'd never been that far south of my town before, and it was quite pretty, especially with the leaves turning. Devlin had put a CD in and I was happy to see that our taste in music was pretty much the same. We hit the city limits at just about lunch, and Devlin pulled into a diner. Hungry? he asked. Not really, but I know better than to not eat anything at all, I answered, getting out of the jeep to follow him inside. After being seated, and a server coming by to get drink orders, an elderly lady approached our table with a smile. I don't mean to interrupt you young'uns, but y'all make the prettiest couple I've seen in a long while, she expressed. We do, don't we? Devlin mused, looking at me. Thank you, ma'am. Couple, I echoed, looking at him solemnly. What, you got something against dating a redhead? He teased. When I still didn't smile, he sighed. I meant what I said at your house, Vanessa. I really do like you. Quite a bit, in fact. Maybe it's love. Hell, I don't know. A single tear appeared and spilled over my left cheek. If we both live through this, I pointed out. He moved to sit beside me, pulling me up against him warmly and kissing the top of my head. We will, he breathed. After a small lunch, we left the diner to just walk around the downtown area on foot. We had a lot of time to kill before the sun went down, and unfortunately, it would have to be after the sun set before we could get into the building without anyone seeing us. Did you mean what you said about wanting to go into equine medicine? He asked as we wandered down the sidewalk past the shops. Yeah, but like I said, you have to fucking know someone just to get into the door, I answered. I might know someone, he offered. I stopped walking to look up at him. Are you serious? He smiled, briefly caressing my face. I am, he confirmed. Just let me know, okay? Most of the shops didn't really appeal to either one of us, but there was an old antique store that pulled us both in at once. We both sort of smirked and shrugged as we entered the building. Once again, similar tastes. Devlin wandered off to look at an apothecary desk, while my attention was drawn to the old photographs on the wall. 
It was a look back in history, at what people wore back then and how they lived. Slowly I walked down the aisle, my eyes roaming over the photos, until I came to the last one. It was a man, standing alone in front of a huge brick building. He wore a black hat and a black suit, and his expression was positively malevolent. You could literally feel the evil pouring off the photo. He was so eaten up with it. I suddenly felt cold, standing there, staring at that photograph. Devlin? I called, needing him to see it. He walked over to me, and froze against my back when he realized who I was looking at. Oh, holy fucking shit. He swore softly. That's him, live in the flesh. That's my great, great, great grandfather. Oh my god, I muttered. That's what we're going up against. We don't have to do this, sweetheart, he reminded me. I'm leaving it up to you. I'll go along with whatever you decide. Swallowing, I took a deep breath and exhaled, and met that malevolent gaze in the photo. We're coming for you, Doc, I muttered. We're coming for you, you miserable piece of shit. That's my girl, Devlin said and led me away from the photograph. They had a jewelry case at the register, and I found myself looking over the brooches, pendants, necklaces, bracelets, and rings. I knew most of them were fake, but they were still pretty to me. Devlin came up behind me, his eyes going to a ring. What do you think of that? He asked, pointing to it. The ring was silver, and held what appeared to be a large jade cabicon. It was simple, but pretty. It's pretty, I told him. Can we see this ring? He asked the clerk. What are you doing? I asked, nervous. Shush, he admonished, taking the ring when the clerk pulled it out for him. Let me see your finger, sweetheart. It's not going to fit, I told him, but let him try anyhow. I found myself eating my words when the ring slid onto my finger like it had been made for it. Nodding, Devlin turned to the clerk. What do I owe you for it? After we had walked out of the store, I gave him a confused look. Why? I asked. Jade stands for strength, and healing as well, he answered. Plus, I like green just as well as black, and they didn't have any black rings in the case. We stopped again to try to eat something at seven just as the sun was setting. Now that it was down to the wire, I found myself unable to manage more than a couple of bites of the sandwich I had ordered. I tried for more, but it felt like sawdust in my mouth. When this is over with, I know an all-night diner about an hour or so west of here, Devlin told me. I'm gonna expect you to eat when we get there, okay? I nodded, mustering up a faint smile. He reached over to take my hand, interlacing his fingers with mine. We're going to be okay, Vanessa, he told me firmly. Believe in that. I got my first look at the state asylum 20 minutes later. It was like some great crouching beast, waiting to swallow up any unfortunate soul who wandered too near with dozens of little beasts surrounding it to help guide them in for the kill. Just standing there at the steps up to the front door, you could feel the miasma of death and torture roiling out to wind tendrils around you. I took a quiet breath, stealing myself. Let's go. There wasn't an easy way in, which we knew there wouldn't be. All the doors were locked up tight, all except for the one that was padlocked. Devlin smiled faintly, pulling a lock-picking kit from his jacket to get to work. Thief, 
I teased, needing to lighten the mood at least for myself. It's a skill that served me well over the years, he said, smirking up at me. Ah, there we go. The lock popped open, and he removed it to set it down in the weeds. Taking my hand in his, he pulled the door open and led me inside. Once we were inside, he pulled out a small but incredibly bright flashlight to illuminate the hallway so we could see where we were walking. It was inside that building that my sight decided to kick back in after being dormant for nearly five years. Blinking, I saw patients roaming the hall, but they weren't alive. I saw women with their stomachs slashed open, their innards hanging out. I saw children covered in blood and nothing but skin and bones. Oh God! I murmured, tearing up. I see them too, Vanessa, Devlin assured me, squeezing my hand. We have to keep moving, though. Slowly, we moved down the long, long hallway, past the sea of dead patients. They paid us no attention, and I wondered if they simply didn't see us, or if they were so far gone by the time they died they assumed no one would pay attention to them anyhow. We went past the laundry, a row of padded rooms, and past some regular rooms. When we reached the juncture of another hall, Devlin stopped for a moment to look down each of them. This way, he murmured, pulling me down to the one on the left. The second we started down that hall, I felt it. An evil so strong it made me want to vomit right then and there, and I had to work not to. I clung to Devlin's hand, pressing up against his side as we crept down that hallway. Here, we found the rooms where he'd done his best work. There on the left was the bloody Judas Cradle, frayed, decaying ropes hanging from the rings on the walls around it. On the right, the huge wooden tub I'd heard about, a vile black liquid filling it that had things moving in it. The cages children had been locked into and denied food or water or released to the bathroom. Dried excrement lined the bottom of most of them. The operating room, where he'd done his lobotomies, his abortions, the forced sterilization. Devlin let go of my hand holding the flashlight between his teeth as he reached to remove something from around his neck. Here, he murmured, putting it on me. It may help. The pendant settled warmly under my shirt and between my breasts, and I could feel the energy it gave off the moment it touched my skin. Taking a calming breath, I took his hand again and we continued down that hallway. We were close to the end of the hall, when all hell broke loose. A door slammed behind us, and as I turned to look around, I let go of Devlin's hand. Something came along and picked him up, and threw him hard against the wall, hard enough to leave a bloody spot behind when he hit, and then slid down. Devlin! I screamed rushing over to where he lied motionless on the cracked and dirty floor. No, 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 you can't do this to me. No offense, son, but I couldn't have you in my way, you hear? I slowly stood and turned around to stare into the grisly visage of Jebediah Walker himself. Milky white eyes regarded me from a putrid, decayed face. And when he smiled at me, Puss dripped and ran down it. Well, now, I'm going to enjoy you, he expressed. Like hell, I spat, ducking when he reached for me and flying back down the hallway we just walked down blindly. I hated to leave Devlin behind, but he couldn't help me now. If I survived, well, I'd call the paramedics for him and hope that he lived. You can't escape me, bitch. He boomed out from behind me, 
You can run all you want, but all these walls lead right back to me. I rounded a corner and found myself in the middle of his operating room. Whipping around to run out, I got two feet from the door only to have it slam shut in my face. I was trapped in a pitch black room with no light and no clue how to defend myself against Jebediah. I told you, you can't run. He growled from behind me. I turned towards the voice. Who'd you bargain with, Doc? I asked him. You're gonna torture and kill me now anyhow. Why not tell me who you bargained with? Why should I do that when you ran from me, bitch? He countered, walking up to me to grab me by the throat and then force me down on that filthy, bloody exam table. Now, don't you fucking move, you hear me? Fuck you! I spat, rolling off the table and ducking under it. If that's how you want things, you little whore, we can play those games. He roared, and the whole room lit up with red light. Spotting my only chance to escape, I flung myself out from under the table and through the now open doorway, rolling to my feet and spinning to race down the hallway once more. A hellish scream echoed after me, and that red light lit up the whole goddamned hallway then. Doors began slamming open, and his henchmen appeared to give chase after me now, too. Having nowhere to run or hide, I slid to a stop beside a still unconscious and possibly dead Devlin. Hitting the floor beside him, I snuggled right up against him and froze. Damn it, wake up! I breathed. You can't be dead, Devlin. Please wake up. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. I guess I was pressed so tight against him that the orderlies didn't see me. They sort of just milled around us for a moment, dead eyes staring vacantly, before shuffling back down the hallway to Jebediah. Devlin, please! I begged, poking him in the side. You swore we'd be okay, that we'd both walk out of here alive. Tears pooled to run over, and I had to fight to not give in to the sobs. For the love of everything I hold dear, including this man beside me. Someone fucking help me! Searing heat between my breasts reminded me of the pendant he'd given me to wear. Keeping an eye on the hallway, I swiftly pulled it off to put it back around Devlin's neck, offering a silent prayer that it would wake him up. He inhaled then, and would have made a sound had I not clapped my hand over his mouth. He's got his damned henchmen helping him. I breathed. And he's fixed it so that all the halls lead right back to the same goddamn spot. He almost had me, Devlin. Why did you take it off? He asked in a whisper. Because I thought you were fucking dead! I hissed, eyes wide and tears still staining my cheeks. I'm not dead, he breathed, taking the pendant back off and putting it back on me. It'll take more than being slammed into the wall to kill me, trust me. It just knocked me out for a bit is all. Yeah, well, I was out of options, okay? I countered. You miserable bastards. Get back out there and find that fucking bitch. What now? I squeaked. Devlin drug us both into a room, out of sight. Listen to me, he began in a low voice. I have a plan, but I'm going to need your implicit trust to pull this off, okay? Why does that scare me? I murmured. If we both want to live, we don't have a choice in this. He said, and, and there was something in his voice that was cold. All right, all right, I said. 
what's the plan? <laughs>